Without a vision, the people perish. Welcome to Vision Plus, a program featuring a positive outlook, dealing with everyday situations of marriage, children, and business. Believing Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Teacher, author, speaker, delighting audiences from New York to Sacramento with a heart and message for the people today. Bonnie would like to remind you of the 800 number on the screen. Please feel free to call at any time throughout the broadcast and share your concerns. Leave your prayer request and someone will pray with you. And now, teacher, author, and speaker, Bonnie Lebhardt. Hello and welcome. I'm Bonnie Libhart, and you're watching Vision Plus. And we want to thank so many people here for being here. Dr. Nixon is here. Uh, she had to show her husband, who owns EnviroSafe, uh, Daryl, how to find us because we're on location because we have some wonderful people we want you to meet and to understand. And Tristan's over here, and he's being so quiet, I can't believe it. Uh, he goes to that wonderful school, and he's in the uh, special program that is the gifted program, so of course he would be good. If you have wondered about all the things that are going on in the world and how we could possibly get along with people, I know a lot of us have been watching over the last few weeks uh, the movie The War and have been disturbed about some of the things that we see. Well, there is a program that's going on across the United States and cr across the world that's an international program, and the objective is to help other people in other countries and us work together for excellence, not only in education, but just in understanding, in communication. I think that if, as we get to know each other, because as you, many of you know, one of my siblings' uh, children went to the Ukraine and a lot of the Slavic countries and was uh, just very busy. And her objective was if we could talk to each other, then we don't have to shoot each other and hurt each other. And even though we might be jealous of the Russians that ha were at the space station and into space before the Americans were. It was perfectly all right because now they're working together as a team. As a team. And that's what we want to encourage you to do. You know, if we can work together around the world, then we can have better understanding of our other nationalities, other religions, other all kinds of people. And we'll find out that it, they're pretty good guys. My nephew is... Uh, an attorney, and he said, did you know they're now burying attorneys six feet, uh, 30 feet under? And I said, no, I didn't know that, Paul. He said, yeah, because down deep, we're pretty nice people. And so that's the joke. He tells a lot of attorney jokes. That's true about everyone in the world. We took a speaking trip around the world, and we found out that in every country, in every nationality, the one thing that Everybody wants to be needed, admired, appreciated, loved. Uh, they want to be shown that their uh, accomplishments are recognized. And that's what's happening here with the international program that's now at the University of Alabama in Huntsville. But it's not just here in Alabama. It's across the country. And you you know, many of you know that we brought from Vladivostok uh, Olga, who spent a year here, and she now wants to come back again. And we also, some of you know about the 100,000 to 400,000 prisoners of war from the Second World War, Germans mostly, that came to the United States. Uh, and one of the things they learned, here we're supposed to be enemies, and seven of our, my husband and my brothers were serving in the military at the time, and the prisoners of war were working right on my dad's farm, a cotton farm in Arkansas. And we found out that, hey, when you get to know people as friends, we're pretty neat people deep down. So that's what we want to say. One of my very dearest friends is Dr. Charlene Nixon, and she's from the Philippines, and we're hoping that one day we'll go there to speak, and I've been invited by 250 women 
to go to uh, not only Puerto Rico but uh, some of the other countries to speak about about this very same thing that we want you to understand how if you can get along with your own family, start there. I always think the good Lord wants us to start with within our own family, our own loved ones, our children, our spouse, our friends of all kind. And then if we can get along with that, then maybe we can get along with our neighbors. We have a wonderful neighborhood program here at Village of Providence where we live. And then if we can get along with our neighbors, maybe we can get along with the people in our state. And if we can get along with the people in their state, maybe we can get along with people around the uh, country and then around the world. And in order to do that, we wanted you to meet two of the people over the last five years, we've had several that came as part of the international program. Now, we're doing a lot of wonderful things here in Huntsville with these people. They're here. They're educators. They're here for about six weeks, and some of us have an opportunity to be host families. I think Dr. Nixon and Terrell and uh, the whole family are going to be possibly host families in the future. I got to meet a lot of Dr. Nixon's friends from the Philippines when she had a wonderful uh, party. These two that are with me didn't get to go. They were too busy doing other things. We sometimes get too busy going shopping. No, they weren't going shopping, I'm sure. But <laughs> they have had a few days of going shopping. We we have lined up for them to go to the Helen Keller house, to the Museum of uh, Metro the Huntsville Museum of Art, the Early Works Museum, SideQuest, so many things. Going to a, a typical family and uh, Madison Fair that's coming this weekend where there'll be a lot of crafts next weekend. It'll be a lot of crafts and things that are uh, done so they can see a lot of the local flavor. But I know today we were running a little bit late because their computer program uh, computer training they were going through, which Dr. Nixon teaches a lot, we seem to run a little bit late, but they're here now. And also, they're going to have an opportunity to teach for a couple weeks. And I believe they're going to River, where are you guys? McCon. Okay. They're going somewhere in this area to teach. <laughs> All right. So first of all, I want you to welcome, help me welcome, one of the most wonderful people that you could possibly meet, both of them. And the first one you're going to meet is, I call her Helen, but it's Olen. Say it. Well, my name is Olena. 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 Uh, if you're interested, my surname is Sverdenker. I am from Ukraine. It's such an honor for me to be here, to stay here, to meet such nice people. And I hope that I will really make a lot of friends here. So I haven't even thought that uh, Americans are so friendly. They are so polite. They are so open people. And uh, um, I hope that um, that uh, so that it has always been my cherished dream to uh, come and visit America. But now I feel uh, so excited and I feel so anxious. But uh, you see, it's a pity that um, some Americans don't know uh, anything about Ukra Ukraine. They uh, haven't even heard of it. And I just uh, uh, wanted to show you uh, some of our Ukrainian symbols that maybe uh, you have uh, uh, seen them um, somewhere and you will recognize them right now. So this is our Ukrainian flag, which is uh, yellow and blue. That means sky and that means wheat. And uh, I come from a very famous city, uh, which is located on the river Dnieper. It's a very huge and long river, and it is famous for, so that's our coat of arms. Uh, it's famous for Cossacks that lived uh, many, many years ago, and they um, defended our city. They built a fortress, and so our city has, well, uh, by the way, here he is, one of the Cossacks. Well. It, it has been employed by uh, my one of my relatives. So they have lived uh, many, many years ago, and uh, people all over Ukraine uh, know our city very well. Now, you teach the high school. Tell us what you teach over there. And since they've had such a 
pressured course while they're here. We hope they go back and they are very empathetic and don't give all their homework. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, maybe they could even uh, say, I understand what you're going through with all this homework. Tell us what you teach over in the Ukraine. So our schedule is very tense. Uh, I was uh, wondering how Americans can take only seven subjects out of uh, the list. And uh, our Ukrainian students are supposed to take about 20 subjects. Um, and it's very hard. And sometimes there isn't enough um, life in our studying, like the, our lessons are not very lively. And here I have learned some methods um, such as problem-based learning, planning of the lessons. They're very interesting, they're cute, uh, and I think uh, we can easily apply them to our system of education. Sometimes, um, or even mm, I try to make it very often, but um, I try to use project works uh, at um, my lessons. So I hope that mm, visiting uh, Huntsville University will help me a lot, and I will imply everything that I uh, study here mm, in Ukraine. Yeah. One of the things that I observed in some of the pictures, Dr. Nixon, was they have small classes. I think I have to take a drink of water. So how is that different here? We have uh, small classes, um, maybe not very small. My class mm, is about 30 people, but it is normally divided into two groups. Uh, one group uh, study English profoundly and another study mathematics, for example. And uh, mm, so we can be divided into groups and we take all the subjects in these groups that can be uh, that can seem um, maybe small groups for you but uh, i have all i have also noticed your interest that they are sitting straight this way holding their hands like this and putting them on the uh, desk and they are not very emotional but uh, that happens not in o not in all classes uh, i try to make my uh, children mm, very energetic and active at the classes what all ages do you teach? Uh, what what, am, what do I t teach? I teach English, uh, English. I mean the English language. Of what? Uh, yes. I teach different ages from elementary to um, the eleventh grade. That that's upper intermediate, I suppose. So and I teach uh, the English language, uh, country study. I mean uh, the English, um, the study of uh, Great Britain and of the USA, English literature, and American literature as well. That's so uh, wonderful that you do that. And we need to study. We study world history, but we don't get as uh, close uh, maybe in learning all the things we should about the Ukraine. And a place Tony and I stopped when we were on our speaking trip around the world was New Delhi, India. Now, how far? And our next person, Sukanya, is from India, and she brought me a wonderful gift her children made. So, Sukanya, welcome. And tell us what city you're from, how far from major city like Bombay or New Delhi. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Sukanya Chakravarti from India. Uh, I come from Surat, which is located in the western part of India and it is near to Mumbai. It is around uh, uh, maybe three hours journey from Mumbai. And um, teach uh, I teach mainly social studies and as and when required I help my English department also. And another thing is disaster management. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. What We need pro that occasionally. Okay, like uh, at present uh, before going to disaster management I would like to talk about India. At present, India is going through a total revamping of everything. It's in a uh, developing march, in fact, a promise to build a great India. So keeping that in mind, we are uh, changing a lot our economy, as well as brought about a, a very important step in globalization. At the same time, education system also needs to be revamped, was thought by the government. And we are revamping our education system also. So we have imp incorporated many subjects, and among them, in social studies, one of the most important subjects is disaster management. 
And as I say to my students, disaster management is not just a subject which, which teaches you about different disaster, but it's a very important subject because it gives you survival skill. It teaches you because there are many things and many natural happenings which we can't stop. We can't stop an earthquake, but of course, we can take some mitigation measures maybe to stop it from being a very devastating disaster. Keeping this objective in mind, CBSC has started one important subject that is known as disaster management, in which we mainly talk about the phenomena, the natural hazards that really takes place like earthquake, floods, and um, cyclones, because uh, they, excuse me. Tsunami. Uh, tsunami, the eastern part of uh, India is prone to cyclones. The West, we are a multi-hazardous, we have all hazards you talk of. So in that we mainly teach the students, they make a checklist, they, the do's and the don'ts which they should be doing. 